skirts were creations by Chris. Now, if you saw my last video, when the dress don't fit, you may think it was a one-time thing, but it's not. For this wedding dress, all I was to add was a little bling. Well, bling is easy, but when I had the bride try it on the dress to see what I could do for her, I could only zip it up part way. She was in shock. So now we go from a little bling to, you guessed it, a dress rescue. Time to get busy and do some surgery on a dress. Now before I tell you how I rescued this dress, I want you to know if you watched the entire video, I will tell you how to avoid having this happen to you or to a bride you know. First I had to take her measurements to determine what would be needed to convert the dress to a corset style wedding dress. Now you see here, we added the corset. The corset is only about four or five inches long. And what we also did, we covered the zipper area with a satin fabric and added the loops. Second, I had to add a layer of fabric to the front because now the front was low. So what I did was add a layer of satin fabric above the bust area to extend the front higher. All this had to be hand sewn. But don't forget the bling. On to the bling. After all, this was the reason she brought the dress to me. For the front, I designed a hard applique. And in the back, I designed lace appliques on the back from the shoulder to the lower back area. And to add some real bling, I designed and added a necklace to the back, and you will see that a little later. Remember, most wedding dresses are already decorative, so you don't need to add a lot of bling. Well, how did it turn out? Well, let's enjoy some of the wedding pictures. Here we see a side profile of the dress, and you can really see the bling. Here we have a view of the front of the dress, and notice the heart application. Now how did things turn out? Look at our happy bride with her bridesmaids. And here I am with my happy bride. I would call this mission accomplished. This is the bride's mother. She had actually purchased three dresses, and this was her favorite, but this dress also needed alterations. The dress came, but the zipper had to be replaced, the dress had to be cut in hem, and the sleeves were too small, so they too had to be removed and re-sewn, and then the beading work had to be hand-sewn as well. And I'm pleased to say everything worked out well, and this is another satisfied client. This is my friend Ashley. I've known Ashley since she was about 10. She has grown into such a beautiful young lady. I also worked on Ashley's gown. For Ashley's gown, I only had to do some minor alterations. The upper lace was too sheer, so I had to add additional lace and dye the lace I added to match the upper part of the gown. I must say it turned out nice, and Ashley looks amazing. On to the reception. Here are two true friends of mine, Joe and Val Griffin. Before I wrap up, I promise you a look at the necklaces I added to the back of the gown for that final shot of bling. As we watched the bride and the groom enjoy their first dance, everything turned out wonderful and it was a delight to share in my bride's happy day. Yes, good alterations can lead to a very happy bride and help to make for a wonderful wedding. This has been Chris with Creations by Chris. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe and give the video a thumbs up. Now, one of my wedding gown buying tips. Wedding gowns normally will not fit perfect off the rack and therefore will need some alterations. Because you purchase a wedding gown often months in advance, never, and I mean never, have your final fitting until at the most 
you are one month away from the wedding date, and if possible, two weeks away from the date of the wedding. Stay tuned for more wedding gown buying tips.